Ya ni mshikao. Oh. Oseye. Oseye. Ya ya ni mshikao. Ya ya ni mshikao. Oh. Agwa goda minda wale olile mukago. Welcome to another episode of our online series for the Heritage Month. This season we are celebrating, appreciating the Ga people. There's a very important group of Gans we haven't spoken about much and today we'll try and understand their history. We're talking about the Afro-Brazilians. My name is Bernard Avila and I'm here with two very important people. I'll be speaking to a PhD doctor researcher who's done extensive work among this particular group is in the person of Dr. Benjamin Amache Boateng. Doc, thank you for joining us. Thank you. We also have the chief drama of the Agbe group, Eric Odakwe Morton. He's the Agbe Che. Eric, thanks for joining us. Numo, thank you so much. So we want to know who the Afro-Brazilians are. I want to know when they came here. Was it only here they came? How different are they from the Gans? Because the premise for this whole conversation is the Gans view that Ablikumaba Kumawo. Okay. So for the Gans, they accept visitors. Mm -hmm. They see it as a natural part of their development. So I take it that when the Afro-Brazilians came, the Gans were not objecting at all to their no. assimilation. Talk to me a bit about that. All right. So um, <coughs> there were three groups of Afro-Brazilians who have come into this country since the early 19th century. The first group came as a result of gaining money mission. Money mission is when um, slaves are freed by their masters. Um, some of them also get enough money to buy their own freedom. So this, um, a group of people fell under this category. And so they found themselves back into the, the west coast of Africa. And then the second group, this, this happened in 1835 when um, there was a serious revolution among the slaves. The slaves revolted against the Brazilian uh, government and uh, it, it resulted to the famous Mali Revolution. And the Brazilian government at that time saw them to be threats. So they were, most of them were deported. And then we also found some of them coming to the west coast of uh, Africa. And then the last group was in 1888 when um, the um, slavery was abolished finally in Brazil. So Brazil was the final, uh, the last country to abolish slave trade. And then the, the, the British government at that time took a ship and then brought a lot of them to the west coast of Africa. So we have these three scenarios that um, prompted the, the return of the Afro-Brazilians to, uh, to, to the west coast of Africa. They settled in, Bra in Ghana, uh, Benin, Togo, and then in Nigeria. Mm. And in all these areas, they, have, they, they are nicknamed by Differently. The, yes. Before we come to that, it's clear that the first batch came voluntarily. Yes. That suggests that they knew that their forebears came from West Africa. Mm -hmm. So they selected on their own to come to, to, come to West, Africa. West Africa. It wasn't an imposition. No. That's very interesting. The second group that took part in the revolution, mm -hmm. I'm told they were predominantly Muslims. Muslims, yes. So that, that's correct. The Brazilian yeah. government found, found them to be a threat. Yes, and so they were all exiled. Were and then the third batch came through Nigeria. Nigeria, yes. I'm asking this because when I listen to Afro-Brazilian names and talk to Afro-Brazilians, yeah. I find both Islamic and Nigerian influences. Okay. So this must synchronize with the point you made about the second and the third groups. Yeah. That's right. Um, it's interesting to note that Nigeria was, um, I mean, the Yoruba in Nigeria were, were about the last uh, major tribe that went to Brazil at the time that Brazil was uh, beginning to abolish slave trade. So the culture there was fresh among the slaves. So uh, coming back to, to um, coming back to wherever they came from, they took a lot of the Nigerian culture along with them in terms of religion, in terms of music and a, a whole lot of other, other stuff. That's how come you can see that most of the Afro-Brazilians, in fact, the Afro-Brazilians who came to Ghana also have some Nigerian 
uh, uh, links. They have some traits. In fact, they have this, I call them tripartite, Ghana, Brazil, Nigeria um, identity in, in, in the way they do their, 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 their things. So, so the ones in Ghana are called Tabon. Tabon, yes. What names are they given in Togo, Benin, and Nigeria? Yeah, in Togo, they are called the Bra Le Brazilian. Le Brazilian. The Brazilians. And then in um, um, Benin, they are the Amaros. Amaro. Yes. And then in Nigeria, the Agudas. Aguda. Aguda. Yes. Uh, Eric, is it true? Do you have um, relatives in uh, Nigeria and also in Brazil? Because basically saying that some of your people came through Nigeria. Do, do you, is this true? Can you tell me a bit about that? Oh, it's true. Yeah, I know some, something about that there. Yeah. That, that's the place, the Aguda, this is the uh, Agbe. So the Agbe is from Ijesha. Ijesha in Nigeria. In Nigeria. But it's not the Agbe is not come from the, uh, Brazil. But when they made the, the, the stopover at the uh, Ijesha, 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 and they brought this Agbe to Ghana. And they have a song. To song. So this Agbe ensemble yeah. is actually Yoruba. Yes, it's, it's Yoruba. So when, when, when we say Iyalode, it's a queen mother. When we say Ogogo, it's a, it's a chief. Iyalode is a queen mother. It's a queen mother. Ogogo? Ogogo. Ogogo. It's a, it's, it's a chief. It's a chief. Yeah, in, in Yoruba. OK. Yeah. And you still use that in your yeah, agreement? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we are using it. Ogogo, Baba, Ogolu, Wale, Ehu. It means, let's call the chief to come and dance. When the chief arrives, Hey, this is the chief. So call him. So we are going to sing and we play the Agbe to him so he can dance. Oh, go, go, baba, yeah, oh, luwa, lee, who, in the Yoruba language. When is the queen mother is coming? Yalo de. Yalo de, about me, yalo de, ko wanjo. It means let the queen mother come and bath and dance. Oh, wanjo. Oh, wanjo. Because in Ghana, oh, wanjo. Oh, wanjo. Oh, wanjo. Oh, wanjo. And the Yoruba is what? Kowanjo. Uh, 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 Kowanjo. <laughs> so let's, let's call the Queen Mother. Can, can your Agbe group perform this for us? Yeah. So, dog, so far, give me three distinct. The first group, 1835. Mm -hmm. The second group, 1888. 1888. Yes, but the first, the first group was before 1825. 1825. Yes, 1826. That's 18... the voluntary people who came yes. on their own, who bought their way. That's right. Second group, expelled. Yes. Because they did a revolt. <laughs> yes. And then the third group came through Nigeria. Yeah. How were they received? And what, why was it easy for them to be accepted by the by King the Ankara at the time? Okay. So what happened was that this group of people came with a lot of skills that at that time the Ghan needed to, to boost their, their status in the society, in the Ghanaian society. Skills such as well digging. At that time they came, there, there was no water, portable water. And this, this group of people had a skill to dig the ground to find well. And some of these wells are even still um, available, serving the Ghan community. Um, they were also uh, they were very good artisans, masons, carpenters, uh, um, dressmakers, tailors, blacksmiths, uh, um, fish um, farmers, agriculturists, and uh, architects. A so whole the, lot of the Ghanaian, the, the Accra economy yeah. did not have these artisans they didn't because have, they were mostly fishers. Yes, 
So these people were needed skilled labor. Yes. And so the, the, the arrival here was a blessing for the Ga. And as you said at the beginning, that they have a, a, a certain philosophy of welcoming visitors so that they, they, they move on. It was so easy for the, the Tabom to settle in into the, uh, the, the Ga community. Did they settle as a separate group or were they assimilated into the Ga traditional setup? At the beginning, when they came, the only language they could speak was the Portuguese, the Portuguese language, and that even led to the name Tabom. Tabom? Yes, Tabom, where um, the Ga people could only hear them saying Tabon, Tabon, in response <laughs> to um, a question, ex comosa, which is in Portuguese, how are you? What? How are you? And then they respond, Tabon, I'm fine, or it's oh. fine. And then it became Tabon, Tabon, Tabon. So, so at the beginning, that was what they were speaking. That's th what these and other things separated them from the Ga. But currently, they have lost all the, those cultural traits that they brought along. And they have assimilated completely now into the Ga culture. Over time, they've lost the, 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 the way they were dressing, the, the, the special food, the, and, and all these things. But so, so that now it's not, it's not uh, far when you call them Ga people.